Oh, look at you all doe-eyed. <laughs> How could I not be? The beauty. <laughs> Should I go? I've waited five days for you. <sighs> I can't wait till I fall in love. Oh, and... Oh, la la. <laughs> Bonjour. I love your hat. What? No, I don't have money. Last week. Beginner's luck, let's hope. Ten talented new bakers conquered cake. Cake it till you make it. Heather Skill. I am the mother of dragon. And provincial pride. Everyone in Manitoba should be proud of you right now. Earned her the first star baker. <gasps> yes! Others struggled to get their footing. So we have a keg down. But it was a surprising turn. Andy is not able to continue with the competition. That left nine in the tent. Now, it's bread week. I love bread, and I love making bread, so... What more can I ask for? The bakers have a signature cornbread cook-off. I always play with fire. <laughs> Round out their skills in a royal technical. Ooh, the competition is steep. And show off their buns for a festive showstopper. Bread can rest, but I can't. <laughs> Favorite week. <laughs> I am a bread person. My motto for this week is I'm ready for this. <laughs> Bread is extremely precise. You cannot make a mistake. Nowhere to hide with bread. <laughs> Hello, bakers. The best way to start your day? Bread. Truer words have never been spoken. For your signature challenge today, we want you to make us cornbread. Hell yeah! The superstar of Southern cuisine. With indigenous origins, cornbread is simply a quick bread made with cornmeal. Your task today is to make a cornbread loaf Gussy it up with your signature flavors and flair, and then serve it up with a homemade condiment. Bakers, you have one hour and 45 minutes. On your marks. Get set. Bake. bake. I love bread, and I love making bread, so what more can I ask for? <laughs> I find every week to be terrifying in its own way. It's always a new flavor of fear. Hopefully, my reputation of being zippy will pay off today. It's bread week, and it gotta be my favorite week to judge. Bread is very simple, but yet it's so complex. It's like life. There's no time to rest. Bread can rest, but I can't. <laughs> the biggest challenge for the bakers is it's easy to get excited and add all kinds of extra ingredients. We just need to make sure it doesn't take away from making great cornbread. We need to have the right moisture content, the perfect bake, and a delicious crust. It's sweet, it's savory, everybody loves cornbread. Cornbread has a signature soft, crumbly texture, making it the perfect vessel for the bakers to show off their flair for flavors. It really smells nice. It does. My mouth is very European and I can't handle too much heat, so I'm just heating up like a hot pepper and sort of browning the butter a tiny bit. Heather's cornbread will feature pea puree, smoky cheddar cheese, and edible flowers. Back home in Winnipeg, Heather bakes sweet treats for charity and forages with her two children for fresh ingredients in her own backyard. These are nasturtium flowers. They have this beautiful peppery flavor. I have a kitchen herb garden, and I use them a lot in my like late summer autumn cooking. I'm pitting Lebanese olives. This is the best invention ever. Usually technology hates me, but this is working pretty. Never mind, it's not working. Five more. Back in Laval, Quebec. Renier works out with friends to exercise his right for a post-workout treat. And who's hungry? I'm just crying so much because I'm so happy to be here. It's not the onions. I'm going to be using Alberta honey in my cornbread. Hardest working bees you'll find. Little Alberta bees. I am making a Persian-inspired cornbread. My husband and I love this dish, so it's like bringing a Persian dish that would typically be made with rice, but with cornmeal. On the shores of Port Elgin, Ontario, Niv spends lots of quality time with her close-knit family and centers herself by practicing Reiki. Niv hopes to inspire positive vibes with a saffron-spiced cornbread stuffed with a stewed chicken from her Persian mother-in-law's cookbook. This is something that my mother-in-law actually cooks wonderfully. Mm -hmm. Does it put more pressure on Oh my on god, you? yes. <laughs> it's kind of nerve-wracking. I still have to bake the bread and time really is flying by in here. At the heart of every cornbread, there must be corn. 
And while they're all using cornmeal, some bakers aren't stopping there. This is a corn semolina-based batter. I'm topping that with some charred corn, so I'm really bringing the corn flavor in a variety of ways in my bake today. Loic spends his time carving wood, crafting beer, and enjoying a slice with friends in Creston, B.C. Oh, yeah. <laughs> his black bean and honey-flavored cornbread will feature a grilled corn mayo cream and homemade beer cheese sauce. I'm pouring my batter in the bun pan. Hopefully, at the end of the bake, it's going to be nice and even everywhere. Arise, go forth, and conquer. Bake through, please. <laughs> Andrew is a proud uncle. Dump them all on. Yeah. And a doting dog dad with husband Mark. Andrew aims to make Mark proud with a brown butter maple cornbread topped with crispy jalapenos. Cornbread is one of my husband's favorite side dishes, so Mark is the one that's chosen all these flavors. So if anything goes yeah. wrong, it's Mark's it's fault, Mark's not yours. Yeah. Mark's <laughs> Bakers, you have 45 minutes left. If I wasn't wearing these, I would actually be like over there in the corner trying to stop crying. Sydney rules the roost in her hometown of Halifax. Hi, baby. Where she can often be found by the water among friends. Sydney's cornbread will be flavored with charred corn and a homemade lime butter and will be stuffed with her freshly made scallop ceviche. These are fresh Nova Scotia scallops. Get these scallops in the lime juice so the acid can cook them, basically. Sydney's not the only one using a filling to elevate their cornbread. I have got a saffron chicken going. I'm working on my chili right now. This is going to be the floor of my cornbread. It's something that my husband and I eat a lot at home. Hola, mami. Hola, papi. Colombian-born Camila stays in touch with her family back home and works with her hands by making pottery. Camila's cornbread will feature Swiss cheese on top, canned corn inside, and have a chili base. You can hear my brain going, uh, that's going to be soggy. Yeah, so it's, it's a, a pretty dry chili. Um, okay. It's not very saucy. I'm so nervous for you right now. I can't even begin. I can see your apprehension. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to do now. It's in the oven, right? Now I'm about to make my toppings. I'm caramelizing barberries right now. They're kind of like a sour raisin. I always play with fire <laughs> in life and in baking. Right now, I'm preparing the dredge for my fried chicken skins. Okay. All right, that um, sounds amazing. They kind of are. Yeah. <laughs> are you excited? Yeah. When Candace isn't conducting baking experiments with her kids, she can be found conducting her local choir. With soulful spices on the inside, Candace's cornbread will feature fried chicken skin and a pepper jelly glaze. Do you make cornbread a lot? Probably once a month or so. So you feel confident in cornbread? Yeah. Famous yeah. lad? Yeah. 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 I do myself. I do myself now. So I'm making um, just a fried pork skin. If yeah. you listen, you can still hear it crackle. It's like the OSHA when you listen to a conch shell. This is my conch shell. Yeah, that's my conch shell, too. <laughs> Kathy, a retiree from Leduc, Alberta, has a diverse set of hobbies and aims to be best in show with her two dogs, Tonka and Sizzle. Yes, good girl. Kathy is topping her pepper-filled cornbread with chicharron and candied jalapenos. They'll be quite spicy and sweet. Add more texture. Ah, that's my cornbread. Let's see what's going on. We can't see anything. <laughs> I hope it's cooked through. Ah, we're going with it. We're gonna go with it. <sighs> no, I'm just gonna let it chill. These are the peppers for my jalapeno pepper jelly. Um, but, oops. <laughs> While their cornbread cools, the bakers tackle the condiments that will complement it. So this is a beer and cheese sauce made with my own beer. And I have some milk on the stove to make my cream cheese. And the lemon juice is gonna react with the milk and separate the curds from the whey. Science. Feta fig dip. My dip is not sweet enough, so I'm gonna add a bit of honey to bring out those figgy flavors. Gonna fix it, don't worry. You have 10 minutes left, bakers. We're running out of time. It's too hot, it's too hot. Poo -poo 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 -poo. I'm gonna make sure to strain out the lime juice before I put it in. I'm gonna put a little bit of green pea puree in the middle and it just looks good. 
Okay, I can't waste this much time on this one component. It's melting. Yeah. Speakers, you have one minute left. Bro. Stay. Stay. Okay. May I have a hand just like holding? Yeah. What do you need help with? I just want to make sure this all isn't all falling. Stab it into the butter, okay? Ten, nine, ah! eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and done. time! You did it! <laughs> Great. Great job, bakers! Congratulations! Kyla and Bruno will now taste the baker's cornbread. It's really giving that like prism effect. You can see it's actually sparkling. I glazed it with a jalapeno pepper jelly. Well done. Beautiful and perfectly mm -hmm. baked cornbread. That jelly, it's just that tasty little piquant flavor. You nailed it. Thank you. It looks bountiful. You've played with monochromatic colors in a great way. It just needs a little bit longer in the oven, but it's delicious with that dip, with the figs and the whipped feta. It's lovely. The nasturtiums look so pretty on top. Beautiful amber color. It works well if you put a good amount yeah. of pea puree. And the cornbread on its own is a bit on the dry side. Okay. It's very playful. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> so remind us everything you have here. Uh, ripe old age PEI cheddar, cream corn, charred corn, lime, honey, sea salt, butter, and then of course scallop ceviche. The corn I think was enough. What we've got is just too many moving parts to be able to enjoy any one of them. Okay. It looks very lush and rich with a lot of good technique. Thank you. Overall, with the flavors, you nailed it, but some of my cornbread is fairly uncooked. But I think this beer cheese sauce is an absolute keeper. Thank you very much. Visually, it looks very clean, consistent. It has a beautiful texture when you cut through it. Nice. Any doubt we had about the chili being cooked on the bottom? Just gone. The cornbread has a sweetness to it, and it just melts yeah. in your mouth. It's like a whole meal on its own. You need nothing else. Thank you. We're trying all of Mark's favorite flavors. I love the grassiness or the herbs inside. Mm -hmm. Mark didn't do a great job. Did he? Okay, good. <laughs> and I admire you for making your own cheese here. It just needs to be a little bit softer. I would have added a little bit of milk at the end just to so uh, make something okay. that was actually spreadable. Okay. That looks so beautiful. It just elevates cornbread, I think, to the highest level here. Thank you. <laughs> so you got some vibrant color inside. On the one side, it's cooked properly, but the top is not cooked. Flavor-wise, everything is there. It's very enjoyable, very tasty, super nice. Thank you so much. I like that you have so much texture on the top. I was imagining that it would look like a fiesta inside. Your peppers, it's like an invitation, but I really want the whole mm -hmm. party. And if those candied jalapenos were all the way through, mm -hmm. that would have been spectacular. They are delicious on their own. Thanks. So overall, great concept. Execution. Yep. Execution. I'd like to do better. I'm just hoping that the baking gods look down upon me and do something with these little hands and bake some magic. Pretty great start for bread week, for sure. But the thing with technicals is you never know what you're gonna get. It's a good thing I like roller coasters. <laughs>
But I'm sure it's delicious. I do not know what it is going to look like, so I am going to follow instructions very carefully. Bruno, I've chosen a really festive Mexican bread for our technical challenge today. It's a rosca de reyes, and it's a perfect example of an enriched dough bread to test our baker skills. All those decorations, that's a lot of work. Absolutely. We're asking them to make a cookie topping in two flavors. We have a nice quince paste, and of course, candied fruit. Wait till you give it a taste. I get this beautiful, strong orange flavor, and I really like the pillowy texture. I think this is an excellent choice for Bread Week. I think they're looking for fluffy bread that is not underbaked or overbaked or overproofed or underproofed. Today I read the whole instructions, which is always something I tell my students to do, but I never do it myself. <laughs> I promise to write shorter instructions for them in the future. I'm just sprinkling my active dry yeast to activate it. And I'm gonna set it aside, see if it bubbles up. While they wait for the yeast to activate, the bakers need to guess how much orange to zest. It just says, orange zest finely grated. I'm gonna make it orangey, so you can taste it. Oh, perfect. Put the flour and salt. My yeast is blooming. Pulling the dough from the sides until a shaggy dough. What's a shaggy dough? What do you do with a shaggy dough? Give it a haircut? <laughs> You'd think, right? <laughs> if only over that easy. <laughs> what you're looking for in this initial stage is for all of the flour to um, hydrate. And now I'm supposed to knead. It's like supposed to come together the more you work it as the gluten develops. I always feel like I over knead or under knead and I have never been able to hit a sweet spot. I can't tell if my dough consistency is getting better or worse. I'm looking for something that's soft and supple. I feel like a cat right now, like just getting ready to curl up on my baking bench. Put the bowl into the proofing drawer and let it rise until it grows by about one third. How can I tell when it's a third bigger? <laughs> I don't have the spatial recognition skills for this. You're halfway done, bakers. You're halfway done. I guess we're going to be candying. Place the orange on its side and slice into thin rounds. It's round. It doesn't have a side. I'm doing like a candied wedge, but maybe I'm wrong, and maybe it's going to look really bizarre. Oranges and maraschino cherries need to be candied to a glassy finish to impress the judges. Is this what I'm supposed to do? Just stab him. This dough is not exactly as fluffy as I was expecting. So now I'm just forming it into the elongated ring shape it's supposed to be in, like a crown. With the base of the crown-like ring formed, the bakers must now focus on the cookie toppers. So I need to make four two by six triangles, which is confusing for me because triangles have three dimensions. I am a math major. <laughs> Do I know what a two by six triangle is? I do not. First, white cookie triangles are laid on top of the ring. Andrew, I'm here to see what we've come up with. I am laying down the white cookie dough. What? Oh, I did it wrong. Oh. Next, the bakers must add strips of chocolate cookie dough. Okay. And quince paste. Evenly distribute. So I'm taking some artistic liberties here with the quince. I'm gonna pick my prettiest cherries. Oh, they're supposed to be like little jewels. Cute. I can't wait to see their crown jewels. Eh! What? Oh. That's not what I meant! 30 minutes left, bakers! We gotta get this thing in the oven, like, now. Okay. Once it's in the oven, I can't do anything about it. Oh. Everything's falling apart, including me. Everything was going really smoothly until the cookie. I just mixed up the chocolate and white cookie. It's what it is. I, I don't, I'm just gonna bake it. <laughs> I think this is gonna bake until the very last second. The need to check is strong. 
I want to open that oven. I'm sending you good vibes, doing Reiki on my bread right now. Well, usually I have like a thousand other things to do because it's at home and three kids. Yeah, this waiting with like nothing else to do is harder. Oh, I can smell bread. That seems like a good thing. My bread's not even going to be cooked. OK, I'm very close. Bakers, you have one minute left. I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? It's got to be done. It's got to be done. And I need to get my oranges on. OK, 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 OK. Green, green. We're crowning this queen. Oh, my god. Not good at all. Cinco, cuatro, tres, dos, uno. You're done, bakers. Hands off your rosca de reyes. Great work, everybody. The tent really humbles you. <laughs> Bakers, please bring your Rosca de Reyes up to the gingham altar and place them behind your photo. The judges are looking for a well-decorated Rosca de Reyes with a golden brown bake, pillowy texture, and orange flavor. So right away for our first baker, we see some really nice color here. But the pattern is all on one side and not on the other. The texture of the dough is actually really nice. The orange zest balances well with the chocolate. Moving to our second baker. We're definitely getting much closer to the pattern we are looking for. And look at that, beautiful and light and those little pops of orange color. Beautiful pillowy texture, very nice. Moving to our third baker. We have a nice uniformity, but the whole thing is a little bit more restrained. By kneading it a little more, you would have had it open up more. Good flavor. OK, moving to our fourth baker. Very clean work. Mm -hmm. Beautiful color here and a beautiful presentation. You can see it wasn't kneaded properly. There is kind of chunk coming out, but well proofed, well baked. OK, now to our next baker. We can see this was not baked long enough. The fruit are candied properly. But we have the decor that's sort of all over the place in an attempt to maybe get it in the oven at the yeah. last minute. Moving to our sixth baker. Nice uniform shape. Although the citrus looks beautiful, they are way too thick. So the dough is a bit crumbly, not very consistent. So I don't think it was kneaded properly. But otherwise, great flavors. Moving to our seventh baker. They have definitely followed the instructions, and we've got alternating pattern. But it does lack coloration in the baking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can see, as I suspected, that we've got literally a layer of raw dough right in the center. Moving to our eighth baker. I really like the thickness mm -hmm. on this orange. This is exactly what we're looking for. Well needed, but it does need more baking time. Yep. And moving to our last baker. We can see one side has risen nicely and is higher than the other side where all the weight is holding it down. So it is very crumbly. The orange zest pops through in a nice way in this mm -hmm. one, though. The judges will now rank the bakers from bottom to top. So in ninth place, whose is this? Andrew. You were definitely on the right track. I think you just lost your way. In eighth place, Rainier. You obviously had some struggle, but overall, nice presentation. Niv comes in seventh place. Candace in sixth. Loic comes in fifth place. Sydney ranks fourth. And Kathy lands in third place. In second place, Heather. So close. You just need to perfect your knitting. And that leaves us with first place. Camilla. Camilla! I want a technical challenge. I can't believe it. Maybe Brett was my strength all along and I just didn't know it. I am not giving up. Now I think it's time to get a good sleep and focus on the showstopper tomorrow. <laughs> It's day two of Bread Week, and the bakers have one more challenge before Bruno and Kyla decide who will win Star Baker and who will have to leave the tent. So far, I haven't baked to my full potential, so hopefully today we'll get there. I'm going to bring my A game today. I think that's what people say when they want to be on top. Baker! 
Bakers, we're wrapping up Red Week with an epic showstopper, a festival of buns. Our festival of buns is inspired by the annual bun festival held on the island of Chung Chow in Hong Kong. Where once a year, three giant towers of steamed buns 60 feet tall take center stage. Yeah. For this challenge, you will build your own bun tower consisting of 24 individual buns with two different fillings. Bakers, you have four hours to get your buns in top form. On your buns. Get bread. Bake. bake. To supper. <laughs> Anything can happen. I got four hours for disaster. I'm feeling great. I'm refreshed. I slept well. I'm ready to fight. Our showstopper today is a festival of buns. We are looking for, of course, delicious fillings, but we need to have well-constructed buns, properly proof, properly baked, and I'd be most impressed if we see some sort of special detail to really elevate the whole concept. I know my flavors are solid. I just want to make sure it has some wow. For any bakers in a showstopper challenge, there is the ambition right there, and then we have the execution here and they need to merge both of them to do the perfect bake. Moving slow and steady today is my plan. <laughs> steady as if. Bakers must make two bun types that show off their bread making skills and tell a story. This first one is a rye bread, which is like, it's a Winnipeg rye, which is a bit lighter. Absolute classic Manitoban, so I can't mess this up. My first bun is an enriched bun. Every 10 minutes, I'm doing something. There is absolutely no downtime for me today. What are we doing over here? We are mixing bright yellow dough that holds the pierogi filling. Oh my gosh. My mom is an excellent bun maker and I got some of my skill from her. Oh, so you got your buns from your mama. I got my buns from my mama. <laughs> Kathy's green poppy seed buns and rose-shaped pierogi buns will transport the judges to a beautiful garden party. So no pressure, but my mom makes the best pierogies <laughs> in the world. As if there's not enough pressure in the yeah, tent as so. it is. <laughs> Struggle is real. Just got a throw butter at it. I'm making a Italian maritozzi. Okay. It's battle of the maritozzi. I'm doing one too. <laughs> Ooh, the competition is steep. <laughs> Loic's lychee maritozzi will be paired with a mango-shaped bun filled with duck to commemorate an exciting trip. I went to Hawaii a couple years ago, just before my wedding. Yeah. I also finished my master's uh, oh. at the hotel. So you're like writing vows and also a dissertation at the same time. Pretty much, yeah. and renting champagne glasses. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little bit hard at the start because it's so sticky, um, but as you need it, it'll form a nice, soft dough. I'm looking for it to be the texture of your arm. You touch it and wear your first pillowy and then you hit your muscle. It's like that's kind of the texture it's supposed to be. I'm starting with a Goen Pao bun which is like a soft milk bun. Festival of picnic foods from my childhood is the theme. Candice will bring the judges on a Tanzanian picnic with veggie and beef samosa buns. All right, you go to bed. My maritozzi dough is in, and I'm gonna work on my other dough right away. The baker's second dough should be distinctive in flavor and appearance from their first. I added beetroot powder, that way it gives it like a nice pink color. This is panela. I'm using it to sweeten the dough for my cheese bread. It's really sweet, but I love sweet things. Camila will marry traditional Colombian buns with fillings she's discovered in Toronto, sesame paste, and Chinese barbecue pork. You look very comfortable with bread. I do pottery. Yeah. And kneading clay is very similar. Uh -huh. There's love in the dough. Amazing. <laughs> Two hours! Two hours? I can't do it. Well, do you want to be a bun man or not? <laughs> it's already been two hours. <sighs> With doughs resting and proofing, the bakers move on to their fillings. There's a lot of fillings and they're very different, so I'm going to be moving from like savory to sweet, from savory to sweet. It's going to be a meat and pine nut filling. All these great flavors. It's going to be a vibe. I am in breakneck speed, working on my progi filling. I am working on my sambal for my steam buns. Now, sambal is a very spicy. It is a very spicy. I grew up eating a lot of Indonesian cuisine. My dad put that on everything. Andrew's tower is a celebration of his parents' anniversary, with spicy chicken buns inspired by his father's favorite flavors and mince buns, which borrow his mother's famous recipe. 
So it's a note to your parents, huh? It is a yeah. note to my parents, yeah. And, you can yeah. make like a little small bun that's you. I think I'm a pretty big bun, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Something smells so unreal right now. Yeah, what's up? What's in there? Oh, it's my hoisin and ginger sauce for my duck. Oh, duck. This is some pork loin. Usually this would marinate overnight, but obviously I don't have that much time. So we're gonna call it a fast marinade. I am starting on my honey dill chicken. Honey dill sauce is like cult in Manitoba. And you have it with breaded chicken fingers, especially after drinking. Heather will house her honey dill chicken in a Manitoba rye bun while her mushroom-filled buns tell a more familial story. Our family loves hanging out and wandering around in the forest and being like creepy forest people. So, <laughs> that's what this is. Bananas. I hope the judges go bananas for this bread. I'm working on a banana puree and my caramel started as well. It's like multitasking at its finest. Inspired by flavors found in Kerala, India, Niv's Banana Tree Tower will have monkey-shaped buns with coconut filling and maritozi buns stuffed with banana and caramel. Oh, no. Minor issue. Ooh, what's the minor issue? Just messed up my caramel that I had spent like an hour working on. Oh, no. Uh, it like separated. I don't know what the hell happened to it. So we're starting from the top. Okay, do we have time to do that? Have we factored Absolutely that in? Absolutely not. Have you seen the schedule? There is zero time wow. for error. Yeah. I am making a muhammara filling. It's like the sister of hummus. It's like a red pepper and walnut dip. So I added pomegranate seed just to give it that tartness. Ah, uh, I forgot to strain it. Ah. Uh. Bakers, you have 45 minutes to take your towers to the top. Ooh, this is going faster than I thought. This is not awesome. The dough feels good. Puffy, happy. Like a little pillow, pillow of love. I have to give birth to little monkey babies. Making these buns in the shape of a rose is like arts and crafts, but it's only with dough. I'm gonna stuff these with my chicken filling and then turn them into bees. It's important that the bakers pack their buns with a generous amount of filling. I'm making cows. They are literally going to be filled with dairy, but also berry. And seal them perfectly to avoid bursting. The secret is to pinch the dough all the way around. Just make it all an even thickness. Make sure the seam is underneath so it doesn't open up in the oven. I just saw my mom doing this and it's kind of genius. This allows me to put the filling and just get like a consistent shape. Grenier's bridal party inspired tower features two styles of milk buns stuffed with Lebanese meat and Mahamara fillings. I'm putting egg wash on my buns so that they come out really shiny. Oh la la. Be happy little monkeys. <laughs> Shouldn't crowd them. Nah. While most buns are baking in the oven, bon voyage. some bakers are using other methods. Oh, steam bath. I'm deep frying my oyster buns. Deep frying stresses me out. I don't know why I chose to do it, really. Evoking memories of her summers in PEI, Sydney's brioche cow buns will be filled with jam and pastry cream, while her briny oyster buns house a mushroom filling. And I like the color there. Now I'm going to start working on my decorations. Flower decos. I don't even know if banana trees have flowers, actually. Let's get some nice coating of this dill to make it look kind of like oceany. This is uh, my stand that I built at home in BC. Yeah. So it's the tree of abundance. <gasps> and so your bun. A bun? <laughs> abundance? <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes left, bakers! Ah, oh, my heart. We're gonna be cutting it close for time. Oh, wow. I think they're coming out. These are, uh, lost a bit of their color. Some of them worked and some of them didn't. I'm gonna use my hot pan that just came out to stick the noses on my cows. I have no more time left. I would love a margarita. Bakers, you have one minute left. <sighs> oh my gosh, just enough caramel. Ooh, it's right on the edge. Oh my goodness. Ay, ay, ay. No, I forgot my flowers. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 
six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy Blood Festival! Great work, Bankers! Great work! Ready for my nap? Now, Bruno and Kyla will assess the Baker's Bun Towers. Camila, please bring your showstopper up to the front. Can you help me, Alan, please? Yes, I can. Thank you. Just okay. hold it from the top. Okay. Camila, it catches my attention because it's very detailed, very precise. It's just so visually appealing. Thank you. Let's try the pan de bono first. That's the cheese bread. It's filled with Chinese barbecue pork. Very mm -hmm. tasty. Mm -hmm. Lot of moisture. Delicious all around. And then we move to the over bun. It's called roscon in Colombia. The contrast of the black sesame paste is absolutely beautiful. Great texture. I mean, look at that. It's melty and just oh, beautifully done. Heaven. I'm really happy you like it. It does evoke PEI. If you've ever been there, what do you know? You know that there are cows and there are oysters. <laughs> Should we try the brioche first? It's very fun and clever. They're filled with blackberry pastry cream. I mean, the brioche dough is very tasty, very buttery, just not enough filling. Okay, should we try the oyster? When you fry it, I think you're always a bit too high. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit on the dry side, unfortunately. And the amount of salt on the outside is detracting from the flavors on the inside. I like the flavors on the inside. Thank you. It's beautiful to see how the color flows together so well. And so nice that they're natural colors. The turmeric buns are just gorgeous. It's a beautiful milk bun. Great texture, good flavors. I like the ratio of filling. Makes you want to have a nice big bite. So now let's try the pink buns. The filling has a good flavor. I like the tartness of the pomegranate. Thank you. Heather, each one of these has a very distinct personality. Some of the bees are happier with their bakes than others. Oh, I see. My bees have a honey dill and chicken filling. The filling is very good, but you do like a bit of salt. Now moving to the mushrooms. It's a creamy mushroom filling. Did you season it with anything? As yeah, well? I did have some yeah. rosemary in there. More, okay. because that would bring that woodland essence out in the mushroom. Candace, you brought the picnic right to us. What a creative display. So let's try the... Um... The pow? Yes, this is a going pow filled with beef samosa filling. Beautiful texture. Look at the bounce back. The flavors are lovely and the peas give it a nice little pop in there. And the second bun? A vegetable samosa mini garlic naan. It tears so beautifully. Well baked and delicious flavors. I'm glad you've put that one in a basket so I can just pick it up and take the whole thing with me. <laughs> These monkeys, they have so much personality. It's really creative. We should try the monkey first. The filling's in the belly. The uh, coconut filling has good flavor, but it's quite dense. And now our banana maritazzi. If you'd baked it for a bit longer, you would have had a more pillowy texture, mm -hmm. but the caramel detail to look like the end of the banana, that was really, really clever, well-placed. Andrew, this looks very elegant and romantic. Thank oh. you. Let's try the steam bun. The steam bun is chicken, and I made my own sambal and Indonesian chili. Very good feeling. <laughs> Peppery, <laughs> spicy. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. The feeling is so good, you know, you need to put more, more inside. In. Okay, thank you. It's so interesting to look at. I love how they just float in space. <laughs> Let's try the mango buns first. We can see that it's splitting here. You might have want to pull back a little bit on the filling. I like the little pops of mango. It's a nice combination. I've never done that before, duck and mango. And tell us about the second one. The maritotti filling is a lychee mousse. You can see that beautiful mm -hmm. pillowy dough, very even baked. You get the lychee flavor that's almost like a rose. You kind of nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> Kathy, 
It's very clean and consistent. So, the pierogi bun, let us see. We might have to call my mama. Oh, no. <laughs> the amount of filling, it's a beautiful ratio. It tastes exactly like my mom's recipe. Oh, I'm so happy. Thanks. Great job. Thank you. All of the bakers seem to do really well, so who was the best at bread? Camilla won the technical, did a beautiful signature, and today's showstopper was almost perfection. And when we look at Kathy, I mean, right to my own heart, of course, her execution displayed all of her artistic skills. And Candice, both the signature and the showstopper was outstanding. Who's in a little bit of trouble this week? You know, Sydney did okay in all the challenges, but never really blew us away. And when it comes down to Renier and Andrew, neither of them did very well in the technical, but both of them had strong elements in their signature and their showstoppers. It doesn't sound like either of the decisions are going to be easy. Not at all. Bakers, this week you really earned your crust with some fabulous bread creations. But one baker proved to be a breadwinner across all three challenges. The Bread Week star baker is... Camila. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Unfortunately, despite some tremendous talent, we do have to say goodbye to one of our bakers. The person leaving the tent today is... Sydney. I'm so happy for this experience because I've learned so, so much. The hardest part right now is leaving the other bakers who I already feel like are my best friends. I'm rooting for every single one of them because they're all amazing. Take only pride what you've done. Congrats. Thank you. you killed it. Thank you. I think my friends and family are going to be really happy for me. Winning gives me a boost of confidence that all the little mistakes I see with my bakes might just be an issue of perception. I'm the star baker. Next time. Scandal, scandal, drama. <laughs> Bakers level up in a painstaking cookie week. I'm legit going nearsighted. Whose cookie creations will stack up? Gets my most ambitious bake. So scary and stressful. And whose hopes for a cake plate ah. will turn into...